Hello and welcome back. Okay, so today I want to look at making a PCB for the VGA interface. Now that's just a small sub-module in the VGA, but it performs quite a crucial role. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so I've got the Mandelbrot on screen at the moment because I wanted some pixels to show. But uh, the VJ's kind of got four sections at the moment. You've got the output at the moment, and that contains our DAX. You've got the sync generator, which we built in the last VJ video. We've got the tile map, or what we're calling the frame buffer, here. Kind of scattered around this, we've got the circuitry that is standing in for the interface. And we've reserved this space for it, but the job of that board is to do some decoding on the address data and generate signal control lines for various things like register loading. We've got four registers at the moment, which are the horizontal and vertical scroll register. They're more than eight bits, so we had to split those each into two. But I can update those with the memory mapped I.O. So the lower eight bits here is at address 8B00 at the moment. And if I change the value there, it will give me a pixel level scroll shift on the back buffer. Do the same for the vertical scrolling as well. Obviously, we've got some pretty cool demos that change these values rapidly in order to create uh, good effects on the screen. But for now, Let's have a look at designing the PCB to move the basic form of the interface circuitry here in and uh, make it fully functional. Here is the backplane segment we've created for the first few PCBs of the VGA. I've got this section down the bottom reserved for the interface. And what I've done is I've taken all of the connectors I put in place here and the PCB layout and I've extracted them out into their own little bits. So this is going to be an excellent starting point for designing the PCB, and we know this is actually going to fit. Hopefully I won't come across anything that causes me to doubt the PCB layout I've created for the backplane. Now the interface PCB has a number of jobs. Now, firstly, we have to connect the address bus to VJ address bus and memdata to VJ memdata. Now, without any complicated circuitry, that could be a direct connection. If I actually look at the overall design, I don't think we run into a fan out issue there, but we do have a fair number of memory devices in the VGA. So I think actually putting line drivers between these sets of lines might be a good idea. That's gonna guarantee we don't run into any fan out limiting issues, but it also means that our circuitry is gonna be a bit isolated from the CPU. And uh, if we make any mistakes on the breadboard once we've got this in place, it's, uh, it's gonna give us a bit of protection. Right, we have to generate the mem region lines and we need the load lines for the sprite and the scroll registers, which we're gonna derive from the memory inputs and the upper bits of the address bus. Now I need a 541 line driver. Can pull that straight to ground for output enable. Now this is going to be much easier if the lines ascend from right to left. Okay, so now we need to generate the region load lines. So I think we need a bit of a reminder of our planned memory map. Okay, let's have a quick look at the memory map. Now this is roughly the same data I presented in the memory mapped IO video. At the top of memory, we currently have the loader and the stack. Now this is obviously software configurable, but the stack grows downwards. So putting it at the very top to begin with is obvious. And at the moment, the bootloader we stick into E000. So we're going to stick all of the VGA regions underneath that. So we've got the frame buffer, or what we also call the tile map, the tile data that relates to a video and circuitry that hasn't been made yet. Same with sprite data and the palette data. And then we've got the region that we've reserved for memory mapped IO. And for the VGA, we've got a total of eight registers that I'd like to be able to set from the CPU. So the job of the interface, in addition to buffering 
all of the address and data lines is going to be to generate control lines when we're writing to each of these separate regions and each of these registers. Okay, we're going to need a bunch of these 138s. I believe it's four of those we need. On the first one, we need the three most significant bits, actually the four most significant bits. Bit 15, we're going to use the active high enable. So that means that this chip is only going to do anything for the top half of memory. These three bits go into the address selection. You need to pull those down. Right, so this is the lowest region, that's 8000 onwards. So that's going to cascade onto a future device. Then we've got the sprite, it's a 4K region of memory. So each of these lines is 4 kilobytes. Okay, so then the tile data and tile map are the next two pairs, but we need to derive those by anding them together because they're eight kilobyte regions and each of these lines is a four kilobyte region. Okay, these next two lines we're not going to be using directly. They represent the regions we've reserved for the bootloader and the stack. And we take the cascade into one of the active low inputs. Okay, so each of these lines is going to represent a 512 byte chunk. So each of these 512 chunks uh, sequentially go below the sprite. So the uppermost pair of those is going to be the palette data. So we have to add those together as well. That means that line five will only go low for the 512 byte region that contains our memory mapped IO ports. Now we did say we were going to put bit eight into this active high input here. So cascade from there down. So this chip will only be activated in the correct 512 byte region. This divides it by two, so we're down to 256 bytes. Let's get the bottom three bits in there. We just need bit four to be a correctly determined. And we kind of just want all of the remaining address bits to be zero. This was our big compromise. So we're putting these, those are not the right lines. So the seventh bit is going to go into the active high enable input. That's what's going to move our scroll registers from 8B00 to 8B80. Those sequential addresses go in there. We haven't accounted for free yet. Then the only thing we're missing is the memory load line. Now that's quite a complicated piece of circuitry to design blind, but let's hope it's going to work okay. That line is a mistake. We need to check that on the back plane. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, that was wrong. The mistake was in the same place. So that just means temporarily we've got a mislabeled trace on here. That's uh, not the end of the world. Now that is our memory mapped IO load lines done. We've got our memory regions done. What else are we lacking? Uh, I guess we've got to derive VJ memory load. Now this one's kind of tricky because we're actually using that directly from the memory load line in the VJ circuit at the moment, but we know it's not quite conforming with the standards for the RAM chips. It needs to be delayed a bit because when the line goes low, we won't have the correct lines on the address bus. So we've got to delay it slightly. We had a very similar issue on the main memory board 
and we actually just put these jumpers in so we could configure that delay slightly. Might help us tune it when we come to try and see how fast we can clock the processor. So I'm going to just copy that circuitry over. Ah, that's something we missed. We're generating these lines regardless of a read or a write. So from here down, we'd only be activating when the load line goes low, but the memory region components would activate for a read. Solve that easy enough though. The membridge direction line goes low when a memory write operation is in progress. We are calling this signal VJ load going to be passed into the write enable lines for lots of the chips but that's what we need. Okay we need some decoupling caps. Can't actually see any good reason for LEDs on this board. I suppose we could put LEDs on all of these load lines but that would be better done for the board that contain the registers. because we use some of these connectors exactly as they appear in the existing build. Excellent. I was expecting those to be VCC and ground. That was an oversight. More like it. Okay, let's see how these root. Okay, so I'm going to move these to the other side and I'm going to put them in the opposite order because that's a bit more convenient. Here's quite a lot of these address lines need to come all the way over here, well pretty much all of them. That wasn't what I intended. That's the wrong way around. Need to check that on the uh, back plane as well. Could reorder the positioning of these gate uses to help out a bit, but I'm going to try and route it as is. The so routing on this would have been a lot easier if I'd had a taller profile PCB with uh, these chips up here. Now getting all those address lines over here, I kind of feel like I've broken the back of this now. Clearly better off if those were the other way around here. Magic.
Now I definitely want to keep this as a two layer board if I possibly can. Now I think it's just VCC and ground I need to worry about now. A ground there will be a fill plane so I don't need to expand any of these I just need to make sure there's clear connections. Is a signal wire I missed. It's a little bit messy, but I'm thinking about the ground fill. I think the routing there is done. Which I seem to remember this didn't come out brilliantly. Should be better. That's cool. Okay, haven't got a good reason not to order that. Right, so I've got the PCB and the stencil delivered. You can immediately see I made a small mistake on this one and didn't flag topside only, so they've tried to put my little jumpers on a separate piece. That's not a problem, but this is obviously offset from the middle. Still, they look good. I think it's going to be easier to hinge at the bottom with that mistake. Now designing this one took a bit of working out, mainly because of all of the address decoding, but the final circuit is actually quite simple. I'm trying a new technique here of moving the PCB as little as possible during placement and moving the microscope and my hands instead, which I suspect will make for a slightly better fast forward video. Okay, that component placement was deceptively easy. Okay, that one line there looks like it could be a problem. I'm going to see if I can solve it with the hand soldering iron. Overall, I think that went very smoothly.
couple of commenters have reminded me that when I have big rows of address lines like this, I really should break it up a bit with a couple of extra ground returns. And I think they're probably right, but I'm not going to redo these circuits in the back planes unless I absolutely have to. Okay, now we've got one last thing to do. If we did put jumpers on the back. Okay, there will be a phase where we try and tune these at some point later on, but if it works, it works. So I'm just gonna use the jumper to set the largest delay. Actually creating a solder bridge is uh, easier said than done. I think this is going to be quite difficult to test removed from the main circuit, but I think we can run a few tests on it after integration before we actually just let it run. So let's get the main build out and give it a go. Okay, so here's the PCB all soldered up. Now, honestly, this bit always has me a bit nervous because this is where I find out if it's just going to work first time or whether or not I'm going to be spending a whole bunch of time doing some troubleshooting and diagnosis. But actually wiring this thing in is going to be a little bit tricky. So let's see how far we get. Now we're going to have to do some partial disassembling on these boards. So I grabbed a ground line here that's going to interfere with plugging the interface in. There's one there I can grab. I don't think we can keep this arrangement, but this should allow me to plug this in. Also, this yellow line so that is the full 25 megahertz clock. It goes down to the horizontal counters. You need to get that from somewhere else. Now we feed the same clock here into the DAC board. I think this is going to have to go underneath the tile map. Well, it fits. Right, now we need to extract this completely. These main lines at the bottom here are quite easy. Okay, I've got a very short DuPont cable here. It's going to be much neater. Okay, so I think that's everything wired up to actually make the board connect. Looks like I wasn't smart enough to provide the register load outputs for the scroll registers, or I could get at them easily. I can squeeze a connector in to give me access to them there. All right, let's bring the bus tester in. We need that mem data lines in there. I've got a connector here, so let's grab the lowest register Feed that into register load. Borrow power. Okay, power it up. Okay, no explosions, that's good. If I load 8B80, then it should load this register, which will pull the contents in here. That's good. Let's try it again just to confirm we're not a fluke. Yeah. Now, if I try the next address, it should do nothing. Right, we saw a tiny flash here, or at least I did. I don't know if you did, because the data was shoved onto the bus. But now if I move that to next address and repeat that, it should work. I'm accidentally giving lots of demonstrations about how it doesn't work there, because I typoed the address. But that did work. Excellent.
OK, it should be all the control line connections made, but we still have mem data and the address lines that need to come across. Now, I've still got all of the interface decoder logic going on here, and the same up here to generate the register signals. The easiest thing to do there would be to pop this 138 out, and if we take those four lines from there, that should give us the load lines. OK, so I'm going to test the register loads now. That means that we're going through here and we're using the decode from the interface. B there. I'm going to load one zero there. That looks like it's all correct. So that's the registers loading properly. That's the region select. Currently comes from this decoder, but we should be generating that here. So what we're actually missing now is the address lines to here. Okay, the VJ registers have changed, so my current commands aren't going to work. But the clear should, and it doesn't. OK, so this is where it gets difficult because something's not working correctly and I'm hoping it's just a miswiring here. Let's get rid of a bunch of things we don't need anymore. OK, so firstly, let's check the mem regions. OK, that feels like the region line's not changing at all. Right, let's follow the line back. Lots of writes happening. Expect something similar from the load line. So why is mem region tile map not working? So we kind of failed at the first level. This 138 isn't behaving correctly. But it must be because the register data is loading correctly. OK, this is telling the sprite data loads correctly. I think that 138 is producing the right result, but that implies it's the AND gates a problem, or the wiring at the back. I've just realised a terrible mistake. I've put 74 HCT32s in here, Ah, oh, it's terrible. It's HCT08s I need. Oh, that was a terrible mistake. I did that from memory and I shouldn't have done. Ah, oh, that's a ridiculously stupid mistake. And I think I'm partially saved by the fact that 08 AND gates and the OR gates have the same gate to pin mapping. So, but I'm going to shut all of this down get the soldering equipment back out and we'll see if we can patch it. I do have some good news. Of the two 74HCT32s that are in there, because the configuration I've used the one on the left, um, the 32 is fine, so I only actually need to replace this one chip. I'm going to put a bunch of this captain tape everywhere else to try and protect the other parts against the heat. OK, I'm going to get a bunch of flux in here. OK, so the chip's a bit off where I'd like it to be. That actually looks quite good, and the whole process was much easier than I had any right to expect it to be. Let's get the board back in here. It does need a bit of a clean, but I can skip that for now. Let's try putting the load line back in the right place. Power it up. Okay, now I've just realised you won't have seen that because I haven't set up a second camera yet. 
but um, when I powered the device on, it ran for its startup sequence and then the bootloader did the VGA initialization routines I added and the screen cleared from the previous gunk. So um, we've got that memory access working correctly. Okay, so the bootloader will require a reassembly and I need to blow the ROM. But for now, I've just updated the register settings in the include file. So I'm gonna load one of my demos up. And if this works, that should be a fairly convincing demonstration that the process has worked. Okay, well, that is not correct. Looks like the memory write's happening correctly, but it looks like, looks like the synchronization isn't happening correctly. Okay, this demo appears to work fine. So that's using the vertical scroll register. But this one uses the horizontal scroll register and it's also glitchy. Okay, that's interesting. I've hardwired the scroll registers to not change and I'm still getting that glitchiness. Now, all I've actually done there is put in a few extra ground connections. So yeah, we can claim victory on this, but um, I think the fact that we had this problem and had to add a bunch of extra ground wires in to solve it says there's probably a little bit of investigation is definitely needed. But I'm happy that works because we proved that the circuit here with the uh, fixed chip there is, is doing the right thing. Okay, so slightly embarrassing that I got the wrong chip in there uh, during the schematic production phase, but we got it working in the end. Now, I think I do need to spend some time scoping out and getting to the bottom of exactly what was happening there. I had to connect up too many ground wires there to make it stable, and I suspect some slightly improved ground paths uh, are going to be necessary. And I'll be interested to see if I can refine the back plane slightly to make that good. But anyway, big step forward and uh, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.